Welcome to a very special episode of the Modern Playbook. We'll be uh, dropping content through the week for you as often as possible to keep you up to date on trends in our modern comic market. Uh, with me today, uh, I have three of the best minds in comics. Uh, I'd like to have each of you guys introduce yourself. Uh, I guess we'll go clockwise. Or clockwise. I guess uh, Dino, uh, just chill on the playbook, trying to get that pen and pencil ready. You know? <laughs> Steve from My Bargain Comics. Uh, I put everything in the uh, line below, so I don't have to say anything. Yeah. So uh, Phil Lee with Vintage Comics and Toys. Uh, you guys have seen me on uh, CBSI doing the uh, Star Wars casting speculation. Been uh, helping out with the back nine. We recently did the uh, Star Wars value list, and. Um, we just dropped the uh, Star Wars Hot 20 for December. Carter, it's you, buddy. What's happening? Talk to me. What's happening? What's up? We, uh, What's I was just on? having people introduce themselves. Is, are we gully? What's happening? We What's are. Up? We are. Uh, we're live. Uh, and, of course, the the best digger in the game, the one and only Mercenaut. I didn't have any. I had zero point zero luck today. Oh, I, 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 picked, I picked you up this today, Carter. I, I I killed it today. Damn it. Yeah, of course. I'm Nico, your weekend update correspondent with ComicBookInvest.com. If you get a chance, please. Uh, I need uh, five people that routinely read in, in my article instead of the four that currently do. Not that I'm not grateful for those four people. Just that I could use one more. Loyal you know, reader. You know what we should do? We should make a video since you actually own the article, and we'll just make a video of it scrolling down the video. Oh, nice. So people can video watch it on YouTube. Yeah. 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 Well, then I could have six total viewers. Hey, great inclusion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I wanted to um, try and, and get your guys' uh, opinions about some of the. Uh, auction results that we've seen this week that uh, I thought were interesting. Um, if you would uh, help me with the, the dual screen, Dino. Yeah, I got you. All day, brother. Ba bang Let me hide my task bar. Oh, my God. Holy yep, cow. 9.9. .9. Wow. So I, I think this was uh, – probably one of the most interesting results for the week. Uh, I don't know that The Walking Dead has ever been uh, as cold as it is uh, in this moment. And um, this beloved key banged him out for um, five figures. If you're like me, guys, um, I've been waiting for this book to dip down in 9-8 uh, condition so I could buy a, a copy for my personal collection, and, and that just never seems to happen. Um, I, think, I think I know who owns that book, actually. I think, mean, he's, an old, I think he's old G plus CBSI, dude. Yeah, but you mean who, who owned that book? Well, yeah, <laughs> who owned that book? Well, I, that's the one thing I was going to ask is how many are there? And... Um, I think it's just one. So, I know it's uh, there's 25 of them. Oh wow! 25 nine nines. Yeah, I I know, oh, wow. I know. I can't I can't believe it. And there's over a thousand nine point eights, which That's reminds me of something else that came up this week. I'll just be brief, which we'll talk. I'm sure we'll get to is Naomi. How many Naomi 1.9.8s are there? There's over 900. So there's almost as many Naomi 1.9.8s as there are Walking Dead 9.8s. But let's get back to this 9.9 for now. Yeah, that's wild. I, I didn't realize that the census was that high. And uh, thanks uh, for that one, Steve. Sure. Um, so I guess the question is kind of like, uh, you know, is there a buy-in price for you guys ever on this book? Is, is everybody done with The Walking Dead? Certainly there's a, a rabid and loyal fan base that's persisted uh, over the course of, God, has it been a decade? I think. Uh, it's been I, 15 years since this issue been came out. 17 years. Right? Yeah. But has it been a decade since the TV series started? Oh. Yeah, I think, uh, it's a, I think it was, what, two, 2008? Not sure. 
I can look. Um, you know the buy-in price? I I bought one back in the day uh, for a thousand bucks. It was a nine eight. It was a it was the was it a black label? I guess you would call it uh, for Scotty Reagan actually. Um, and that was like an insta buy. So um, no, I mean that's I'm just trying to look at the uh, Walking Dead uh, from here. I guess. Well, I, I'd like to have one. I'd like to have one. Um, and I mean, I, I haven't even been watching the the spinoffs, and I, I do want to catch up with with those. Um, but I don't think I'd shell out for that. I, 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 I you know, my my um, modus operandi going forward is is to buy more collections, and I, I think you know, there's. If there's a thousand nine point eights out there, just imagine how many raw copies are sitting in collections. I mean, yeah. I know it wasn't a huge print run, but um, twenty thousand, right? I'm going to run a collection. I mean, things. the the Comic Con uh, direct market uh, orders were what twenty thousand, if my memory is right. Okay, Anybody remember? I, and I the thought it was much less. I don't know. And, yeah, I, think, and the, I think it's less, but well, and, well, hold on. I'll look it up while you guys talk. I mean, let, what, so sorry, there's and, the the total in the census of all graded copies is three thousand two hundred fifty six. That's hmm. It makes you wonder how many raws are out there. Well, in, in the Walking Dead, so as everybody knows, the Walking Dead premiered on uh, October thirty first of twenty ten. So you are right, ten years. All right. Good job. Look at you. You're like the trivia master. <laughs> Not all of the time, uh, but some of the time I do okay with that sort of stuff. Um, let me see if I can figure out what the uh, Comic Cron number is. I apologize for not being quicker. Does anybody remember what month? Uh, I'll look at this. Oh, uh, the month is uh, October 2003. There you go. So... But I was I was just looking at the GPA for the nine point eight, um, the ninety day average. Guys, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, eight thousand copies, seven thousand two hundred and sixty six total copies. Uh, Phil, you're exactly right. Much lower. Um, thanks for helping me there. Um, yeah, no worries. Yeah, a thousand of which are nine eights. Uh, <laughs> it's and sort of telling. Another thousand that are graded but not you know below 9.8 yeah still well, a beautiful actually, book 2000 yeah still a beautiful book uh one that i think is going to have um certainly staying potential I, I wonder if um there'll be a time when it dips under a nine eight dip under a thousand dollars hey george uh, yes sir it's not worth the bragging rights to say you own a nine nine walking back <laughs> <No. laughs> i had no. this book I think I paid four fifty for a copy back in maybe twenty fourteen, and I uh, collected all of the keys, not necessarily full run, but the keys. Mm -hmm. Cashed out maybe three four years ago. Whenever that, um, whenever Negan premiered on the show, cashed out. You did well, and, sir. And haven't looked back. <laughs> I have not looked back. Thirteen grand, thirteen grand plus. Uh, not worth it. <laughs> I man, I I spend that thirteen grand on uh, like here's the thing: if you have thirteen grand to spend on that, nine times out of ten, you've already bought other keys. Dig what I'm saying? Yeah, you bought the no question keys. about it. Yeah. So, uh, but if you're, but if this is like your first key or second, third, fourth, or fifth, uh, I'm not feeling that. Yeah, what do you guys think about nine nines and tens? They're cool, but I mean, <laughs> what's the what's the point? Yeah, I mean, I only want them for very special books. Like, like I, I, you know, one of my safe searches is Crisis on Infinite Earths nine point nines, mm. and I don't know that I would actually pull the trigger, but. You know, hey, that, that's a book I love. It's a book I grew up with. Um, it just depends on what my cash position is, you know, at that point in time. I'm I'd like to, Go ahead. I'd like to know the story on who had it graded and uh, when they got when when they received it back. 
Like, what was the reaction? What was, well, you know, what was the feeling? What was the reaction? You know, that's what I'd like to know. I like to know the story on that. Yeah, the guy, the guy who I know who had a nine nine, he uh-huh. was elated. He, uh, I think he thought it was going to be. I don't know if he bought a nine eight or he bought he he bought it and he pressed it raw and he what? thought it was like oh nine eight no big deal, and then uh, it came back a nine nine. He, he was like, and then he was like, he was like just like this. He was like, he, I think he had it for like twenty five grand. Just, I mean, I think he was a one of the first ones to get a nine nine to get on sale, and he just, I mean, he threw a ridiculous number up on it. I don't know what he got at the end of the day, but okay. Yeah, it was it was a crazy day. I was like, wow, nine nine. I mean, I'm in the low rent district on nine nines and tens. If I'm buying a nine nine or ten minus lenticular covers. I would just buy a cheap 99 just to have it. I'm not going to spend mm-hmm. 13. I had a, a nine, the last 99 I had was a an Umbrella Academy yeah. one variant. Not the one of 1,000, but the one in 10. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. barely sold it for a premium. Nobody wanted it. I thought they'd go nuts for it, throw it up in a live auction. It's a 99. Yeah, nobody Come cared. On. Did you put the flame emoji on it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's just, that works. <laughs> Yeah, only if you don't get caught by eBay, it works, right? <laughs> oh, shoot. All right, moving right along. Uh, if you're like me, then you regret not buying these books for $100 a piece. Yep. Um, when they hit the market, and I was like, who cares about a book with Mickey Mouse on it? Yep. And apparently everybody but me um, is it, it the lesson that I learned. Uh, I mean, is this thing got staying power? They continue to move at, at almost a thousand dollars a piece every single week. Uh, it's not the the legitimately super rare variant of this book. Um, we're all aware of the one that I believe uh, Leg and Heartless had. Yeah. Um, uh, can somebody explain this one to me? Because I, I don't get it. I guess I, I, for me, I guess it's like it, it's kind of a cop out on that listing because it says first Mickey Mouse. I mean, yeah, first Mickey Mouse in Marvel. So I mean, let's. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, does does Disney acquiring Marvel? Does that really assume it's an eight hundred dollar book? And are people twenty years from now going to give two shits? Probably not. I mean, that's I, I don't know. I mean, well, I just think I mean, it's a craze. It's a Disney collector, just like Star Wars collectors, right? I mean, it's a niche. I mean, Disney collectors they they. You know, people, you can tell how crazy Disney collectors are because remember, everybody does art. If you do ornaments from Hallmark or whatever, you, you know, Disney, Disney old ho- ornaments, you know, from 2008 that nobody bought are like $600 for some reason just because they're Disney, you know. Yeah, but Mickey Mouse doesn't have the hottest show on TV. I mean, I, I don't get it. Like, I, it, he, well, here, Mickey Mouse is pop culture and exactly. pop culture is big business. Yep. So, that's that's what I sum up about it. You're, you're buying Americana right there, and that's with a lot of uh, comics. I mean, and there you have two central characters of Americana. There, you've got Mickey Mouse, you've got Spider Man. You know, it could be you know if it was you know some other parallel universe, it would be Superman or, or Batman, and people would be buying the same. It's just you know, yeah, you have you have two iconic. American pop culture, like Carter said, um, characters on the same cover for the first I mean, time. I get that none of us are buying this book at $800, right? No. Um, I venture to say that there's no one that watches this YouTube channel that's buying this book at $800. Not one single person. I they probably, they, they, this is they probably watch Comic Tom 101. Is this but I want to know who that person is. It's. It, I want me to tell you. Okay, so yeah, it's, I can't. It's, I don't understand it. it. It's global Disney fans who are like, you know, Disney's a global company. Obviously, I mean, they had Disneyland's in Asia, right? So, I mean, it's it's people who it's like it's like a sneaker drop, dude. It's like you know, people who are like, oh, I missed out on a hundred. I missed it on two hundred. I'm just gonna pull the trigger at eight hundred before they become a thousand. You know, that's what people are thinking. Like, it's people who have everything in their back of their room that are Disney except for this thing, and they're like. I'm just going to buy it so I have it and I can throw it in the it's bin stat- or whatever. Is that a symbol book, you yep. think? Yeah, exactly. Now, you know who loves this book? Who? The Mighty Mel V. Wow. <laughs> it makes him happy every single time I put it up. 
I don't even think I'd buy the raw for a hundred dollars because it, it's just not up my alley. But the other the other reason I wouldn't buy it raw for a hundred dollars, unless I really closely inspected it, you know, which everyone should mm. do. But you know, chances are it's going to oh. be the crappy Marvel paper stock with a black cover. Yep. Oh, well, that's interesting. No, that's yeah. interesting. And it's thick, yeah. right? Those Marvel 1000s were thick books. I mean, so maybe yeah. that's a lot of it. It's got to be a tough 9.8. Uh, I don't know necessarily what the census looks like. but It's, it's not it's, even good art. That's the problem. Like, it's not even like <laughs> I hate to say it. It's, it's got Mickey on it, but it's not a – I don't think – I mean, you guys think it's a banging cover? I mean, it's just got fucking five superheroes on it and Mickey. I mean, I don't think it's – before we get any more thumbs down than we've already got, I, I should just move right along and uh, forgive me if uh, you're sitting on a half a dozen of these like Nika, that no good SOB. Why is he running his jib? Uh, speaking of books that I've ruined. Um, <laughs> so I remember when this was a grand, uh, it, it's ticking up. I, I think it was down around the $350 mark um, about a week ago. Uh, maybe, you know, a little less than 400. We're, we're closing in on the $500 mark. Uh, it's certainly, uh, it's cheap enough now that it's interesting. Venom 3, third print, the uh, first cover appearance of Null, um, who was overshadowed by a push notification on Daredevil 25 this week. Um, <laughs> I, anyone? I mean... <laughs> Hey, guys... hey, hey, just wait till the live action comes out. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just tuck it away, forget you have it, and wait for the movie announcement. That's it. That's it. That's I, it. I think half of us will be uh, in, in... Yeah, Steve and I are going to be dead by walkers. then, Carter. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve and I can't live that long. Yeah, yeah. We can't live that long. So, so let's go back. Let's go back to Nico's prior question. Are people buying it at four ninety three? Like, like Carter, would you buy it at four ninety three? And do you think it's going to go to a thousand when if, it, if there's a live action or something like that? Maybe. I mean, do you, well, this do thing's you... a hell of a lot more interesting at you know three four hundred dollars than it was at a grand when everybody had like uh, you know uh, this is this is the Mel v. seizures over how awesome the book was, and I was like, it's trash. Watch, it'll be half this price in is it, a matter is of months. It's but now half the price, and they all hate me for it. But is, is this the Mel V undercutter slash hater wave, and it's going to go back up? I, I just don't know that there's the collector's market to uh, sustain it, but what do I know? I, I I'm the, That's why I have you guys to teach me about the modern market. I, oh, boy. Anti-Venom is a thing. So if anti-Venom can be, be a thing, no can be a thing. You guys read the King in Black? I, I'm, I'm guilty of not even owning a copy yet uh, because <laughs> right. I haven't made it to my LCS. I also tend to not buy uh, books on Wednesday unless my LCS, uh, you know, has too many. And I'm like, oh, God, he's never going to sell that many of that. And then I'll grab one. Um, I'm I not a – you know, when I go into comic that. shops, I told McClay this, like – I don't look at the new walls ever. I probably miss a lot of books, but I just go right to the back issue bins. Um, oh, see, I'm different. I go right to the back wall, like their back wall. I don't even go through back issues or new releases. This is back wall. I'm like, let's see, let's see what I can grab that I know I know. Yeah. Did you read it, Phil? Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't Thank read God. it, but I skimmed oh. through it. Um, right. I mean, I got the heads up from Kate. I mean, when people were talking about Kate tweeting last week. That you got to read the Doctor Strange, Kate stories. Um, yeah, well, read, we've I been read... talking about that, right? I mean, on the channel, that's interesting. And, and I think you explained to me what was going on with the staff. Yeah, it's from the All World Tree or something. It's, I mean, I didn't really, I mean, I Where's passed Jerry on it for when like, you need him? I passed on it for six bucks, you know, like two weeks ago. Like, uh, I mean, I, I just couldn't buy into it. What I really like is uh, Kate's second story, um, God of Damnation. I think it's issue three, and it has the first appearance of Doctor Strange Ghost Rider. That's pretty cool. Like, wow. I would like to see that. Like, it's a bomb ass cover, and it's a, there's you, a regular. Uh, can you, yeah, can you help us pull that one up, Dino? Can you find that? Because I'm um, yeah. computer illiterate. Yeah. Tell us more, Phil. That's freaking awesome. 
Yeah, so it's uh, Doctor Strange, God of Di Damnation 3, and it's the, it's the first full appearance. The issue before is is the cameo. So basically, like, everyone is, like, Mephisto turns everyone into, like, and all the superheroes into, like, Ghost Riders. So, like, basically, like, Ghost Rider mashups, whatever, right? Like, the zombies, but they're, like, all Ghost Ridered out. So, no, dude, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, it would be actually the one, oh. the next, the next go a little lower. This one, the full cover, this one? Uh, a little lower, below that one, to the left, the one where uh, Doctor Strange is pointing. Oh, the red, and he's got the, the skull head. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's exceptional. So, that's the cover? Yeah, that's freaky. Yeah, that's the cover. So there's two versions. There's a, a regular cover, right? Okay. Is, is and cover, um, I think. And right. then, yeah, the first one right there on yep. the left. So you got the regular cover, right? And then Marvel was so concerned about using the word damnation that they actually censored it. And put tar, tar nation, and that's another. That's a that's another ver uh, open order variant, I think. Um, but that's the one I would go for. They're they're like ten to fifteen bucks. Um, but if I actually see that, if I actually were to see Kate put that into a story, I mean, I'd be I'd be all over it. Well, and I so mean, there's a Funko Pop of that that sells. What? Yeah, there's a Funko Pop of that that blew up. Um, I mean, when I was dealing more with Funkos, I was selling those for like thirty-five dollars easy. It was like a con exclusive. But uh, basically, what happens is that Bill uh, is in the building. Watch out! Get your pens out. So, uh, Doctor Strange I'm so plays excited. like a card game, right? With Mephisto, right? For the fate of humankind, whatever. Mephisto finds out that he's cheating in the card game. I don't remember if it's poker or something. That's probably poker. And then uh, Jane Foster Ryder, the Thor Jane Foster Ryder, hits him on the feet, and he turns into Doctor Strange Ghost Rider. So um, if he uses that, it would be great. And I kind of like it. It's kind of a stretch spec, but um, Bats the dog supposedly merges with this being and controls him temporarily. So there could be, like, a next phase That's super awesome to get that character yeah maybe i mean it's a little bit of a stretch but i i like this one a lot it's good play uh it's not quite pizza dog for me but i'm still in love it's <laughs> a talking dog it's yeah, a talking it's, ghost dog yeah i'm still you know? in love i really am you guys, you guys want to see it talking, yeah absolutely That's the dog. <laughs> yeah so uh this is the game we've got the uh we've got the news uh, from uh, Daniel Richtman and Charles Murphy that um, even uh, our buddy Charlie from Emergency Awesome reported that the uh, casting sheet for Ghost Rider hit. Uh, it went really under the weather. I mean, there wasn't, uh, you know, like a, a lot of, uh, or under the radar, rather. There wasn't a lot of uh, talk about it within the spec community or the collector community. I mean, it was just kind of a blip on the news radar, um, we've heard rumors that Ghost Rider was going to appear in Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness. I like this. This is a great spec play, dude. I'll be buying those books forthwith if they're not already gone. No, they're like, I mean, actually, regular covers like three or four bucks. You can find them on eBay. You know, can't wait. They're there. Can't wait. Me and Carter are going to be pulling. There, there won't be one in the uh, greater Pennsylvania, the uh, Ohio <laughs> area. <laughs> You'll have to go to Michigan to find one. And Dino oh. will really take him from up there. Hey, don't worry so. about that. Good stuff. All right. Moving right along. Uh, and I won't belabor uh, these kind of auction results too much. I, I know uh, I'm driving you guys nuts with them uh, a little bit. Um but I, I do want to try to dig into uh, some of the Star Wars stuff while we've got Phil here to pick his brain. Um, if you'll just let me kind of run through them. So uh, the, the big daddy of them all, 
uh, raw copy. I thought this was a deal at uh, twelve hundred dollars. Um, there was uh, everybody's well aware Star Wars Clone Wars one one of one thousand first appearance of Ahsoka Tano, um, bringing in big big numbers. Uh, similarly, um, we've seen the first appearance of Boba Fett get a ton of interest. Uh, I think by now. Um, it's fair to say that uh, everybody has probably already watched uh, this week's episode of The Mandalorian. Looking forward to the next episode, which will drop um, here, uh, you know, in a matter of hours, not days. Um, even uh, the old Marvel books are, are getting the la you know, a ton of attention, um, and, and people are uh, already clamoring, looking for the next key. Um, I thought this was uh, actually a kind of a, a lower result than I anticipated. Um, Phil, talk to us, my friend. Um, so one of these, one of these books. Yeah. Yeah. What, what in the heck is going on with Star Wars, buddy? <laughs> uh, Man, it, it's not. Can it be stopped? Can it be stopped, uh, Phil? So I'm gonna say that. Um, if you're not watching the Rebel Star Wars, you're missing out. Like, okay, so that's the cartoon. Th that's the animation cartoon. That was the one where Disney was pushing, pushing, pushing worldwide. You gotta, you gotta see this. This is gonna be the first Disney Star Wars collaboration. You gotta watch it. Um, so if you want to catch up on Thrawn, definitely watch that. I think he comes in like in season three, I think, but um. Or possibly season two. And I mean, honestly, I feel that Thrawn could literally be probably the best villain that we ever see in, in Star Wars. Like better than Vader, the Emperor, Darth Maul. Like he's just such a compelling villain that, I mean, if you don't haven't seen it, read anything about him, like the, the heir to the Empire novels, the Zahn novels, like... I mean, that was like a huge, I think I sold like a million books, like regular I remember books. reading it as a child. It's, and then they have the, uh, of course, the comic adaption, right? So, um, I mean, they're, I kind of see where they're kind of going. Like, so you have the Heir to the Empire, then you have Dark Force Rising, and then you have Star Wars Last Command. And, um... I mean, I mean, I kind of see where it's going, but then now you got like they're they're not gonna have the the, the Skywalker saga, right? So they gotta have, they have to replace those like Leia, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker. So, um, but yeah, Thrawn is the ear. He is the ear to the Emperor. Like he's em Emperor Palpatine's gone, and supposedly Thrawn's in the outer regions, I think, and. Yeah, comes yeah, so back. Phil, and... What did you make of the uh, reports? I think Topher and I uh, talked a little bit about it in uh, one of the group chats that you and I are, are both in. Um, there were reports from some media outlets that indicated that uh, they were talking about doing the Thrawn Ezra Bridger story uh, in live action such that it would not be a continuation of, of Rebels. Uh, so, yeah, so if you watch, I rewatched the last episode of Rebels, right? So, like, you have the Battle of the Fall, right? And then Thrawn and Ezra, they go on these space whales, and they're just hyperspace. We don't know. They just disappear, right? So then you see at the last, at the end, you see Sabine narrating, right? And she's like this... It's now after the end of years after the Battle of Endor. I mean, sorry, Battle of the, uh, no, sorry, Battle of Endor, right? So that's Return of the Jedi, right? So um, it doesn't say exactly when, right? So that scene at the very end where Tano comes with her ship to pick up Sabine, that could actually happen after, after the encounter of Tano and um the man uh Din Jaren, ah! you know yeah so that's how it would it would work that way yeah 
So in other words, it, this so we, isn't, they're not changing continuity. They just potentially tell that story uh, in a way where you don't get the gaps in time uh, told to you. Um, so it would still make sense. It's not that it would be, a, it would be, uh, it would be not contradictory, like uh, chronologically, uh, not a change in continuity. Um, you just had to watch it a little more closely. I see what you're saying there. Right, right, right. He's not Did you retconning. Bring... He's not. All yep. right. As opposed to interrogating you nonstop about the intricacies that I still don't understand, which uh, believe me, I appreciate you indulging in any of that. Uh, cause Lord knows I've, I've got a lot to learn. Uh, did you bring some books with us to talk to us about some of the Star Wars books that you like? Okay. So let me just go back on the Thrawn thing really quick. Okay. okay? So, um, I was like, just kind of like deep diving to figure out what's going on with Thrawn. Right. So, um, so in the middle of this, right, I guess. Thrawn's trying to like rally the rest of the remnants of the Empire, right? After the destruction of the second Death Star. So I was reading that um, Thrawn actually found 20,000 clone canisters from that was a that was from the Emperor, right? So that kind of feeds into um, kind of the story, right? When we when we saw the 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 cl the, the clone canisters and the dark the the, the dark troopers, right? So um, I was reading a little bit further, and there's actually a, a, a Jedi Master, right, that Thrawn teams up with. Um, unfortunately, that guy's first appearance is in Air of the Empire 1, Master Cybioth, right? So um, this guy's like a dark Jedi, right? So um, they're, he's teaming up with Thrawn to try to um, get so we can have his own like dark Jedi order or whatever his own group, right. With Leia and, and Luke. Um, and then going back with the clones, right. So um, the clones, they say in the novels that they die because they, they can't control like the dark, like the force, like it drives them insane. They go nuts and then they die. So, Maybe that's where like Rogu, Baby Yoda kind of comes into play where they need to have his his mm. blood, you know, his force blood to kind of control the, the clones from dying. So Thrawn's trying to uh, raise his own. He's bringing back the clones. He's trying to bring back his own army. But who knows how it's going to play out. But this is kind of where I'm seeing how it kind of comes into play. Maybe, you know, we got to fill in the gaps here. You know, we, we got to. You know, we gotta work as comic book speculators, kind of like see where the Mando is gonna, Mandalorian is gonna go with the. I guess it's like only two episodes left. Is is, is that quick? Already the end of this end of the season. You know, it's been so good, right? So, you know, unbelievable. So, Thank you, my friend. Yeah, I uh... yeah, and yeah, I don't have the book with me, but there's another book that um, during my research I was looking at. Uh, volume two of Darth Vader. So um, Darth Vader number 10, right? So in this book, he encounters uh, the librarian from the Jedi Temple, Jocasta Nu. Um, so we've been hearing rumors that Jocasta Nu is the one that rescues baby Yoda from the Jedi Temple, right? So um, in this comic, uh, Jocasta New Encounters is looking for Jedi Padawans uh, for her Jedi Academy, right? So um, they go off in a, in a battle, right? They fight each other, and Jocasta knows that Vader is Anakin, you know? So, um, so Vader, he, he ends up killing... Oh, oh, so Jocasta New is like, hey, I know you're Anakin. You can still choose your path, right? Um, stop being a tool of the Emperor Palpatine, whatever, right? And then Vader kills Jocasta Nu, but finds that she has like this this memory chip, right? And in this memory chip, um, there's the name na eight names of Jedi Padawan, um, all from different planets. Um, it's just only the first mention of them. I try to like look for first appearances and stuff, but um. I mean, I definitely grabbed the book, Darth Vader 10, um, volume two 
that has I mean all you need is one of these names to to hit and then you have like a a dollar book that could maybe hit like 15 bucks you know so I good mean we'll stuff, see dude. you know good stuff uh you like the Jedi Academy books Phil um it's it's possible it can happen um I mean, I was researching it a little bit. I can't. My brain's a little bit fried right now, but well, because, it can I mean, definitely. It's a you would agree something Carter, that can happen. That's a dollar book, right? The Jedi Academy ones. Like I yeah. see those in like back see- issue bins all the time. I just leave them. Now there was a time when I was grabbing them, uh, and then I was there was a time when I was mad because I was like, "Well, I shouldn't have been grabbing those. Why did I even buy them?" I, I assume you're probably the same way. You buy like I do, and now here we are, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. So the librarian is going to appear on the Mandalorian, rescue the child, and take the child back to the Jedi Academy. And those books that I inadvertently bought that I was once mad about are going to become like the, you know, uh, Strange Academy of the new Star Wars (laughs) Disneyverse. And I think that is the kind of like, holy crap, um, that has people like me who are not, you know, traditional Star Wars people just so excited about all of this stuff. Oh, definitely pop for sure. Totally. Well, it's just that like anything could happen. Like I, I never in a million yeah. years. Uh, so if, if that could happen, then maybe even the X wing rogue squadron that we all leave behind. Well, there's know, a couple, couple of those books that I buy. Actually. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I know there's like one or two, but yeah. That? 21's good. Let me see What's in 21? Uh, I would say smart about Star Wars because I think it's some of the best spec out there. I just I am so far behind the game. I can't catch up. So leave it alone. But I think it is probably the best, ripest area of a spec right now. So Vintage Man, hats off to you because you've got it all nailed. Yeah, Phil's been killing it, dude. Phil was one of my yeah, earliest I mean- teachers. So, I, I mean, mean people, literally, I'm like, I, I wish, I wish I could catch up. I just, at this point, I've kind of put up my hands. And I can't get there, but God bless, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I, Kylo Ren three is a great book. Like, you can get a nine eight for a hundred bucks. Like, oh, I, I think I've got that. Is the second print worth shit? Because I think I got that right over there, actually. Kylo Ren three. I I, for some reason, I think the second print. And isn't even there a third print or a trailer? There's a third print, I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. As well. I've been buying them all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, mm-hmm. it's like 10 bucks every day for the first print. I just bought like, yeah, you know, I bought several of them. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, just you- wild. It's wild that uh, one of those books can go from nothing to like, you know, some ridiculous amount of money uh, overnight. Star Wars. It's just, I, th- I think, I think Star people Wars, have been looking I- for a. Yeah, I think people have been looking for another winner, you know, sides outside of Marvel, mm. you know. So, I hey, mean, they wanted about- DC so bad to to really, really get up there and catch up with Marvel, and you know, I mean, Disney and Star Wars are just killing it, man. This We're is not like an into, from DC, um, but I think Star Wars is bigger than DC. And and, and Steve, no <laughs> offense, I know that's your baby, but like that's all right. Star- it feels like it, and and I and I know nothing about I know nothing about it, so I can't even participate. But um, anybody who is, God bless. I mean, I think it's phenomenal. I'm like that with the uh, Transformers and uh, GI Joe comics. I'm just dude. I'm to- I'm trying to learn, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> and I got people in the live chat that hate me that make fun of me. <laughs> like you ask Ultra Maximus, is this good? What yeah, about dude, that's exactly this? what I'm about this. Yeah, well, because I buy these like ratio variants. What I did was like I just started looking at like ratio variants, and then it was like, well, if it's under three to five dollars, or like between three to five dollars, and it's uh, an RI. Yeah, if it, yeah, yeah. Grab it. I'll roll the Grab dice. It. Doesn't matter, and I just started cleaning places out. Um, we'll see if I'm nuts or not. Uh, well, hey, one one last Star Wars book. I wish uh, Dino was here. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice one. Yeah, yeah I like what? this one. This is my own theory. Um, so this is the first. I'm, I'm about this. I'm about the uh, Phil's theories. For the love of God, we need more of them. Well, some people hate me for you know 
for this one, you know, that I did up for casting spec. Oh my God. <laughs> you know? Oh, I love you, man. Listen, no, man. Anybody who so so rocks the boat, I trooper. love you, man. God love you. Yeah, you're oh my responsible God. Well, for the Dark Trooper too, which is a good one. People cry about. Yeah. yeah, we got yeah, we got this one. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's a that's a good one, you yeah. know. Yeah. It you wasn't right. me. I, oh, that wasn't. Well, you? I mean I, I, I th- oh Jason Jason Shaw was the no, one Jason. who connected the connecting the dots article for CBSI. He was the one that clued me in on it. And Jason's um, a stud, dude. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, this one I like a lot because we're talking. I mean, we're, people are asking like, "Whoa, whoa what? Who are the surviving Jedi's from Order sixty six? Um, who are the mm-hmm. possible candidates to come back mm-hmm. for Grogu?" Right. So he commits his. I mean, he completes his like meditation in the Jedi Force, right? And uh, so, I mean, someone got the signal, right? So I'm thinking um, Quinlan Voss is the first appearance. Um, and you that's get Star Wars book. number. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Star Wars seventeen, Dark Horse, right? Um, it could also be. Uh, you can maybe search it. Uh, as Star Wars five emissaries to Malastare. So yeah, right can there. I also mention the other thing that's a big advantage to uh, going and being able to buy Star Wars back issues? The guys at the store. They don't know how to look them up, so you can right. go to those stores where they like. Like, I love <laughs> buying Star Wars books for a couple reasons. One, uh, when I tell them like I'm here to buy Star Wars books, they like want to pop champagne and roll out a red carpet for me. They're like, "Oh, yeah. I've got a run collector and he's an idiot." Fantastic, and I'm like, or you can just say, "Hey, I'm looking, I'm looking love- for Star Trek books." <laughs> yeah, you know, basically. right next to each other, right <laughs> Dude, in the basically. dollar bin. So, you know, and then the other one is the guys that are like, look every book up on eBay so they can try to charge you what they couldn't sell their book currently for on eBay. Um, they can't find them. They literally don't even know how to search them. They, they don't know the keywords. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's great. Star Wars digging is some of the best digging period. I don't yes, care what sir. anybody says. Hey, it's do fun. you have time to talk about, um, to talk about a specific book. Um, I've been hold looking, on, big guy. Hold on. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. I've been tracking the auction for this Woo! Um, for the Bring past out. for the past couple of days. So we have Star Wars Old Republic, Blood of the Empire number four. Okay. Yeah. It just now, banged them, right? I was on at, uh, Sunday night. Yeah, no, I was at this Saturday point. night. I was at this store today, and as the auction ended, this book was in my hands. And this ended at, I think, like $153. Wow. And I don't know if there's fuckery afoot Jeez. or not. You know what I'm saying? But um, I, I what, what's up with this? What's up? That's with the this? first, that's the first vitiate, I think. He's like okay. one of the old school badass um, Sith Lords. He's li- He's lived like hundreds of years, like... This is like pre Palpatine, pre Plagueis, Darth Plagueis. Like that's that's that could be a major major book. I sadly don't have that book, but it's, it's, I mean, yeah, there yeah there's all their first in there too. There aren't many uh, in our area because I took them all. <laughs> okay, so you knew about, <laughs> this. You knew about uh, rated. Well, it was on uh, Ben C's first appearance list. Really, out the gate, he uh, he earmarked that book, put it on there. Uh, I don't know if that was his pick or, uh-huh. or you know, Topher's or, or a combination thereof yeah. or Phil's or who, you know, keyed him up on that. But um, anybody who cries a foul of uh, that list uh, is just mad because they didn't buy all those books. It, it was exceptional. Um, it, and they just keep picking winners out of it. Like, it's just unbelievable. Other people are just catching up and the books just keep popping. But that, I that, like that's you. the one list I have bookmarked on my phone. Right, right. That CBS <laughs> my list. Yep. Yeah, just control F. You'll you find Carter Garden you know. for like a buck. I mean, come on, give me a break, dude. Come on. Just, every... hey, just four. Just four bucks. Oh, four bucks. Okay. Good job. <laughs> yeah, that's great book. Okay. Yeah. So anytime we're talking about someone who's been in the Star Wars universe hundreds or thousands of years, I th- I think that kind of means uh, I guess this the play on that is you know, maybe that'll play into High Republic. Is that 
Phil, is that the thought there on that book or no? So that guy dies, eventually dies. He's not going to make it to High Republic. High Republic is just really just, I mean, it's, it's pretty much out, like just uncharted waters for that series. So. so you don't think they'll pull anything, anything from the current canon into that? It's all sort of new, new canon? Unless they would tell flashback tales, but no, I think uh, I, I, I think they'll weave in uh, like uh, storylines that emerge there, but mm-hmm. uh, the characters would have to be like flashbacks almost, right? I, mean, I think well, pe- people have different theories about how the the TV and, and movie stuff could shake out. Some people think, and I think uh, this is the minority opinion that they go forward and do uh, legacy. Um, others think they go super far back and do old Republic. Um, if they do uh, Knights of the old Republic, you know, you get Revan, uh, Malik. And then um, I, I think uh, some people just think they do the Sith Lords and, and uh, tell uh, like characters like this, uh, it's all sort of like a, a guessing game. I, I I don't know. Phil, you got any strong opinions about that? So I think like Vitiate and Darth Bane, they're like, I mean, in terms of like Star Wars fans, like they're, they seem to be pretty much equal on that level. So um, Vitiate's a good play. Um, I think reading more of the Thrawn stuff, I mean, there's just so much like gaps that they need to fill with, I mean, they're not talking about, they're not doing the Skywalker saga. They're not, they're not, they're not going to go with Leia or, or Luke or Han. So we got to see what characters could uh, replace them. And could it be out of thin air? Who knows? You know, um, definitely would like to maybe be back on later. I mean, I'm, I'm still looking into it. What, what other characters could pop? that have comic book appearances. So um, I think with Thrawn, I mean, you can even do uh, a cadet, you know, like when he's first found by the Empire in the outer regions. Uh, so that Thrawn one through six, um, you can, they can do the origin story of him. I mean, this guy could be, re- I mean, he can be really huge. Like this, this guy's, I mean, this guy's the limit for this villain. Like he's just so compelling. Like, I mean, the fans who have watched Rebels, they know what, what the potential. And then look at the platform. You got the Mandalorian platform. I mean, you got you got the Mickey Mouse, the Disney, what the, the the Mickey Mouse variant people like buying this type of stuff, you know? So it's definitely a high a big, big possibility that Thrawn could I mean I'm ready to get like killed here, but I mean he could be the best probably maybe the best villain that we ever see ever on film or on on television, you know. So, Phil, I mean, did you say what is crazy. the Thrawn book? Like, if if you had to pick one above all, I mean, it's got to be the the heir to the Empire one. I mean, it's newsstand? it's a tough book to get. Uh yeah, newsstand would be the one. I mean, we've also seen the UPC sticker that people are talking about with the empty empty barcode variant, but uh, the comic book pack is pretty good. I like that one. It's super hard to get in super high grade. Um, then you got the Dark Horse Insider 46, and uh, there's an Overstreet fan guide, uh, of Overstreet fan magazine, I think five, four or five or six, and that's another good one. It has got that Heir to the mm-hmm. Empire cover, too. So, um, all right, yeah, before I mean, the sky's people, the limit for that uh, guy. Before people spend all their money on Star Wars, Jessup, how are you, buddy? Fantastic, man. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, Jess. What's up, buddy? Hey. Ben, what's happening, man? Um, I wanted Her, to you know, kind of talk about Steve. the uh, the Vintage. news of the week that's got everybody uh, going crazy. Can you uh, help me, Dino? Yeah. What do you want? Share your screen? Uh, no. I, I, want, or I don't know. I, I just want to. Yeah, that. Um, oh, yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, can we say Vintage. it together now? Pizza, pizza dog. Pizza dog, dog man. <laughs> <laughs> I've been so happy. Oh, so happy. 
Um, what do We're you guys think? For you. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think? Haley Steinfeld, uh, is she going to light the world on fire? Is there any perfect. room like the perfect left? perfect casting for Kate Bishop. Like, the perfect fucking casting. Like, but is there any room left on any of these books? I mean, Christ, this is a cover. They hearken back to uh, the comics right. so well. Uh, ben, I know uh, you're digging for it right now, aren't you? Oh, come on. I can't help myself. Uh, hold on, hold on. we got to figure out how to I mean, do it's not exactly the same cover, but it's it, it's a throwback it's, to it, yeah, right? It's pretty, it's pretty much the same cover. All right. Uh, help, help us do that one. Bam. Um, I'm on top of yeah, things. At least Dino knows what the hell's going on. Yeah, man. Like, I I've always, like, it. Noto, I've always. But you loved. had that. It, it, you can't tell me there's not some freaking throwback, right, to this book right here, which is gorgeous, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Hawkeye yeah. ain't, ain't a chugging a big gulp in that picture, but, you know, close enough, right? So, so what do we think, guys? Uh, is there any room left on Kate Bishop books to grow? Uh, I will be, yeah. Because Kate the Bishop show hasn't is, aired yet, so yes, absolutely. She's a tenure character. This is not like this is it and she's done, right? Yeah. And, I, and I, listen, I'm not a Star Wars guy, but Ashoka Tano, if you look at like, you know, how she's, that character's grown through the, the most recent episodes of Mandalorian, like, I, I think this show's probably going to come out Christmas next year because everybody's saying it's like there's there's Christmas episodes. So you've got 12 months. I, I think there's th these books are going to spike right now, fade, and then spike again. So like I wouldn't be I wouldn't be buying right now, but in two or three months, I would be loading up on this with the expectation and maybe unload them in sort of October, November, December time frame next year. So. And, and on top of that, if you want to hold them beyond that, I mean, Kate Bishop isn't going away after this. I mean, Young Revengers is coming. She's going to be a like a major character for MCU for a decade. So I wouldn't be yeah. able to get rid of these, personally. Well, they cast Kang. They're not going to tell they, who they cast. Allegedly, uh, <laughs> allegedly, they cast Kang uh, as the uh, God. Bless America. I can't remember his name. He was the uh, lead actor on um, the Lovecraft uh, Country series. Um, shame on me. Oscar, Oscar Isaac? Os no. Uh, I'll tell you. Give me a second. I'm glad yeah, he's he's been casting. I, I think that the, this Young Avengers team is going to be amalgamation of, sort of Young Avengers Volume 1 and Young Avengers Volume 2. Right with with, um, no question about it. Right, it's not going to be a, a true little adaption of that Young Avengers one book. I don't think. Maybe it's there John. We go. It's John like Johnston. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. And what confused you. you is there was uh, news today that indicates that uh, Majors was considered as uh, Moon Knight, but they ended up casting yep. him as Kang. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think Kang is coming one way or the other. Whether or not it ties directly into Young Avengers is, is, is hard to say. I know there's the whole Iron Lad story there, which people are trying to sort of connect back to. But, you know, it's hard to imagine that sort of Miss Marvel doesn't tie into Young Avengers or America Chavez, who seems to be on her way. So I don't think it's going to be that sort of Young Avengers one that everybody's specking on Kate Bishop's first appearance, but uh, you know that team is coming in one form or another. I think, and uh, and if you like Kate Bishop, then I don't think there's any rush to drop her books right now, unless you're looking to sort of sell them and buy back in. Um, but you know, all that aside, this this TV show looks awesome. Anybody who loves that Mad Fraction run is psyched about this. And I know, Nico, you're into it and a bunch of other people, like, amongst the best modern comic runs in history, so... Unquestionably. You know, me yeah. up. I can't wait. So, what do you think? Uh, are we going to see those uh, Ronin books pop again? I mean, uh, the Ronin iterations as both Hawkeye and Blade? Um, that seems just like uh, a no-brainer to me. If you see those cheap, um, I don't even know what they're going for on eBay. 
Um, but I'm kind of filling my boots on that stuff. Uh, anything else you guys are really excited about? Uh, if you missed your chance on Pizza Dog, you should have listened to us a long time ago. By us, <laughs> I mean me. I told you so. I mean, there's so many Kate Bishop books that are, that, that are like screaming. Like, I mean, Nico, I think you and I are on the same page. But like, for me, when it comes to modern comic covers, like this oh. book. Yeah, like, dude. Top ten, like, this book is almost untouchable, sort of, for modern covers. Like, this is just amazing. So, so that's I, the first appearance of the clown. The clown, but I don't, I don't, I don't care so much about that. I mean, I think it adds neither do to I. It. Yeah. But, but just just the coloring. I mean, this cover is amazing. Um, I yeah, would that's be my driving. favorite. You can still get uh, raw copies for like a hundred bucks on eBay. You know, so so this is number two. This is when Kate Bishop first officially enters this series. But number one in the third print in purple, I'd run out and grab as well. Like yeah, I snag all of the late printings of that first volume whenever I see them. Unless they're they want some outrageous amount, but if I see them in the like three, four, five dollar range, I just take them all. The purple ones though just pop, right? Yeah, I mean, those are the. I mean, those are the only ones, right? Or the purple ones because yeah, they're all the late the Second print is still in the white, and I think fourth and fifth are still some variation of white. But these purple ones, for me, like must haves, right? Beautiful. Right? Okay. Apparently, I've been inadvertently missing the non-purple. Uh, later printings because I just thought if they were purple, they were later printings. No, I think like I think so what happens when you don't use my comic shop to figure out what covers actually look like and just sort of guess what they should look like based upon the crazy ideas that I fabricate in my head. Yeah, I don't want to go beyond one and two. One and two, they had complete purple background, but all the other there were just some cool stories, right? Like that tape cover is a great story arc. I, I just yeah, sort of great. hope. Uh, the fraction run. Um, she's got a ton of variants. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out, but uh, I'm really excited about it. I think. I, I think we were. I, go ahead. Oh um, yeah. Series. I think. Dino, this book home run. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it's good. Aha uh -huh book. Yeah. The Aha uh -huh yeah, book. I mean, it's yeah, cheap. Good. All of a sudden, it's like the three hundred dollar nine eight. I was shocked. Yeah, I think this is a great book, right? I mean, this for all of her her uh, variants that uh, have jumped, and all the books that have jumped in like the last nine months. That one hasn't. I actually thought about buying a nine eight um, this week when I looked and saw how cheap they were. I was like, "What?" You know what the beautiful thing? Nobody's noticed this, or a few people have noticed. I don't know if I can do this, but you see this one, her, how she's standing. It is a complete replication of this one how he's standing right it's literally the same the same positioning it's sort of complete throwback to this number two where she enters the series so i don't know i love it i think it's a great book and it's not uh, super crazy expensive I, I was gonna make the crude joke of that's the only way you can hold a bow and arrow but i mean it's, <laughs> there's only so many ways to hold a bow and arrow but. yeah if yeah if i was better at holding those two you'd see that those are actually almost identical like poses like but yeah. I, I can't do that so uh okay steve phil both of you were trying to say something i apologize i, I do a terrible ahead, job of trying to mc anything go for it uh, well i was going to say the uh, the cheap buy-in especially since i don't own any of that fraction run oh um, really yeah yeah really uh well you know i'm i'm, I'm more you're DC, a dc but, guy forget yeah, don't yeah. worry i got dc in the bag just for you i know but um yeah, the, the cheap buy-in because if, if you look at the pattern right with with miles it went to ultimate fallout and then it was you know the first book of a solo series and if you look at riri it was invincible iron man seven and nine and then it was her first solo series well the cheap buy on in kate bishop is you know her first solo series you know issue number one 2017 which is you know a very cool cover you know um primarily you know yellow background and I guess it's got the first appearance of Alloy in it where, you know, honestly, I'm a DC guy. I don't know who Al Alloy is, but I've heard Alloy, and I think it's Ramona Watts, right? Um, yeah. You know, mentioned as, um, you know, another potential character that can show up. So, um, you know, it sounds like, you know, so some of these books may have uh, spec value already built into the price, whereas, you know, the Hawkeye 2017 series, you know, may still be a low buy-in. 
Smart. Yeah. Go Thank you. Pat, on so many <laughs> I eat one. The yellow covers. Dude, tell me about it. I just started buying stacks of them recently when I see them. Like, you I know what I mean? I'll be like, oh, there's 15 of them. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, it's such a, an amazing cover that Hawkeye number one seven. I mean, whatever her first. It's a beautiful cover. I mean, absolutely stunning. Yeah, but I you can saw, find I them in dollar so bins in our area, right, Jessup? No, they're in half price books. They or they were. They're probably not anymore. But I mean, I I've probably passed on fifteen of them because I I see them all the time. I'm like, well, if I ever if it ever hits, I'll pick them up again because they're there. But uh, I'm kind of on the. Uh, I heard Dino say in the chat the other day that he was kind of not not poo pooing, but. <laughs> uh, I'm, letting, I, 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 I'm just sitting on the sidelines on this one. I've got a few Hawkeye books, and and I'll I'll, I'll probably sell. Did you read the Fraction Run? No, I didn't. Yeah, see, it, I, I Phil, did you read the Fraction Run? No, I didn't do it. No, I didn't it's amazing. amazing. It's fucking yeah, so, amazing. Hold on, right now, and I, Steve, you did not. No, but I I really want to now. Now hold on, Carter. Uh, are you uh, are you uh, all in on Hawkeye? Absolutely. I'm, hey, I'm okay. Sad. Now hold on, hold on, Carter. Did you read the Fraction Run? A million years day? ago. A million yeah. years See, ago. That, but that's what it was like when we got in comics again. I think a lot of us about that time. There were a couple magic runs in comics, right? There was that early Batman New Fifty Two Court of Owls stuff, and there was like the Hawkeye Fraction stuff for Marvel. And uh, this is like that coming to fruition for a lot of us. Uh, Phil, I, I know that you had uh, an observation. I apologize for. Uh, oh no, we're that. good. We're good. We had some good thoughts here. Um, so yeah, I was talking to Dino in the chat, and mm -hmm. um, we're you know we're talking about hey, how much how much are they spending per episode on mm -hmm. on Hawkeye? And it, it's 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 a ridiculous amount. So it's like been, yeah, so it's twenty. It's twenty five. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna say loosely from my loose sources. I have uh, Business Insider was saying it was twenty five million per episode, which Wow. Is like we're on like Game of Thrones level here. I mean, that's Holy like crazy big fucking number. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, you it's know, like, and, yeah. Well, we're, we're talking about how like culture is changing too, right? Like, there's not not so many movie theaters open right now. Um, so is the comic market gonna go with the flow? And is TV spec? Um, is that gonna start reemerging again and start maybe be having <laughs> consistent value? With I mean, we saw what Mandalorian did finally bring yeah, Phil, back I'm so some happy, hot characters. So happy you, you know? asked that question, and, right? Yeah. So I think we all agree that Disney TV uh, is different. Mandalorian different. Um, these forthcoming uh, Marvel TV shows, at least intuitively, even before uh, coronavirus, it, it all felt different to us, right? Um. My question, I guess, is uh, Dina, can you put us on the side again? Yep, yeah, yeah. hit it up. Is the CW different or is this dead on arrival? And I know everybody here has got well, 16 copies of the first issue. So if you just want to plead the fifth, yeah. like Dave well, Chappelle, I plead the fifth. No, I, I, you know, I'm I'm here to Steve on this. I'd like to yeah, hear I, yeah, well, you know, I'm the This is for you, team. Steve. For you, buddy. Tell us what that yeah, was like. I mean, I, I I like you know the CW, um, you know, and I, I like it for personal reasons where you know, <laughs> hey, I'm able to watch it for, with you know one of my sons, even though really the only shows that you know that I've consistently liked have been Flash and then the first season of Black Lightning. I could do or do without Supergirl and Legends. Um, depending on which season and which episode and, and never got into arrow. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think the CW is a different case than Disney plus and, uh, well, but I finally got around to reading this book, uh, the six issue, uh, mini series. Right. It was good. It's okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't my favorite uh, right. comic story ever, but it was good. It wasn't hot garbage. I mean, all the people that try to suggest, like, oh, this is just some push by you know DC to do X, Y, and Z, like, 
bullshit. It was a good book. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of wondering uh, what's going to happen with these books. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, our buddy, uh, Tim Walker, who uh, is one of the smartest guys. Uh, I, I wish I knew more, um, but uh, just a, a real privilege to talk to him about comics. He uh, was like, oh, I think uh, I think it's over, dude. Naomi finally got greenlit. I, I just sold like all of my copies. That was what two weeks before, three weeks wow. before the uh, wow. the news happened. He was able to pick up the trend from what was happening yep. to the books that he was selling on eBay. Um, you hear about that people do that, and it's different when you hear someone do it and then it happens. Um. Well, I mean, it's funny in our chat, I think it was even earlier this week, I mentioned like just out of the blue, I had observed that, you know, Naomi 9.8s, they were still selling above $100. Even, yeah. And I, I think that even goes back further than two weeks. You know, I don't know that it ever dropped below. It, it so. didn't. I, I sold it's, mine. It was volume though that uh, that picked up so much, and you know, look, uh, that the volume on this book didn't pick up um, because the news didn't get out. So for all of the inside info that uh, right. we believe that we have here on this channel, from all of the the Patreons and uh, whatever the hell that I pay to try to get uh, news, just. Uh, six minutes before other YouTube channels, you know, so that I can bring it to people <laughs> here first or, or buy books first. Um, clearly there are those who have uh, inside info that are buying books at, at an alarming rate. Um, and it kind of makes me wonder, um, you know, with other characters that we've seen like uh, Miles and Gwen and Riri Williams and, you know, all these characters that people poo poo, like there's not even news yet. Well, I'm like, fuck, apparently we just don't know the news yet. Um, well, I mean, and I never watched a CW you know, show, but <laughs> I, yeah. all I hear is people bang on CW. So the first everything. season of the flash I loved, I even enjoyed the first season of green arrow. Um, I was never a big uh, Supergirl fan. Um, I didn't watch but two minutes of Batwoman, um, and it's over. And hell, I I got a, a crush on the former lead actress. I don't know what the who the new one is, but uh, I might have one on her too. We'll see how that shakes out. Uh, you know, it's just it's not like a, a big uh, draw, regardless of the quality. I, I don't think and. Um, it's interesting. I mean, even shows like Deadly Class on the Sci-Fi Network that, by all accounts, were exceptional. Um, we didn't see any sort of sustained uh, price increase. Hell, the the series couldn't even get renewed. So I, you know, I, I don't know about the long-term value of Naomi. Um, I'll be interested though. I, I'm, I, I'm, I, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, I, and I think we'll. She'll get another bump too, maybe even as soon as tomorrow, because DC's doing that virtual, uh, mm. that Brazilian con, and and the past two days, information has been le uh, not leaking. They've been announcing information about the March titles, and I would fully expect to see Naomi season two, the comic, um, mm. announced maybe as soon as. Well, I know that we're pre-recording this, so um, yeah, any day now. <laughs> hey, as far as CW spec goes, uh, does anybody remember uh, when Longbow Hunters, Green Arrow Longbow Hunters was a thing? That was yeah, the hot book. You remember that? Yeah. Everybody was chasing after it, the origin of... Um, origin of Oliver Queen as the Green Arrow. I found, I saw like two you know, the whole series, the whole set and like a dollar bin, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but this, because she's the lead, this is the lead character in the series. Um, regardless if it flops or not, still the lead character. So, and it makes I, I an imprint term. on her. 
Right. Thank you. It makes an imprint on uh, younger people that are watching it, mm -hmm. right? True. Like yeah. This will be a character that will be near and dear to their heart. Um, and then we've got the Wonder Woman uh, Yara Floric iteration mm -hmm. that's come into the CW as well. Has anybody noticed, um, like, I was searching through eBay, I was trolling eBay, and I saw, like, a ton of Yara Floric like, fan art up for sale. Wow. Hmm. And it all sold. Wow. It was, it wow. was weird. Wow. It was, like, the weirdest thing. It was, like, on a Tuesday, maybe, a, like, a Monday or a Tuesday. It was just, like, a ton of just fan <laughs> art that just sold. And it was, it was just strange. <laughs> People hungry for it. Yeah. Carter, I'm not laughing at you. I just, I just wish I had time to look for fan art. Like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but this, this goes back to... Um, this I get notifications. I just push. This goes back to um, my my question with Naomi and Kate Bishop and stuff. And I know people are alluding in my chat to me just poo pooing Hawkeye, but it's it's you know people are like, oh, it's just going to be future characters, and Naomi's going to be you know this and that. But it's like Jessica Jones. I mean, that, my 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 thing was like Jessica Jones. Like her first appearance went crazy, and then you can't. You can't get rid of a Jessica Jones book. You can't get rid of Preacher number one now. I mean, it's just Mandalorian is different because I think Star Wars, but it's like, is, is Disney Plus going to, I don't know, 25 million an episode? Or is really people going to care about it after season two or after episode two, after everybody sells their books? I mean, well, I think it's kind of like Carter was saying, you know, it, it, but the first Jessica Jones series, it put the imprint uh, on, on the radar and. You know, going back to my famous mm -hmm. expression, you know, say that, you know, there's no, no dead spec. It's just resting. I mean, at, at some point, you know, they'll, they'll circle back to Jessica Jones. Um, well, one yeah, last, in all fairness, no one likes her, right? I mean, Jessica Jones, I, I love that, that alias run. run. Like, I have an opinion. <laughs> I mean, I, I like her first appearance, but I don't think it's going anywhere. But Kate Bishop, for me, and I think for what, Marvel saying like she's going to be a big player, so I think that's a little bit different. Like Kate Bishop, it's not just her TV show and that's it. Like they're setting her up for some pretty big things. So, sure. Well, and uh, you know, Yelena Belova is allegedly going to appear in the Hawkeye series. I I'm uh, somebody who thinks that you know buying Preacher One for absolutely nothing right now, sticking it in a box, is probably a smart idea. Brilliant uh, idea. Brilliant. Yeah, they're, they're just you're, dirt cheap. Ridiculously uh, good series. I same mean. with the Alias one. I mean, it, it had its own series. She's got a shot of showing up somewhere down the road. You know, I think what um, Half Price Crook was alluding to is the casting that people aren't really happy with uh, the way that that character was portrayed as kind of like, I don't know, whatever, uh, by the, the actress. <laughs> disagreeable or something. I, I don't know what the criticisms necessarily were. I liked uh, that first season. I thought uh, the tenant stuff uh, was pretty good. Um, I liked the first season of Luke Cage. The problem with a lot of the Netflix stuff for me was with few exceptions, it just had so many episodes. It was like, it should have been a weekly on NBC, not a season drop on Netflix. Um, because, by about episode four, I just wanted to like skip to episode <laughs> nine, see what happened and move on. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know they were trying to provide a lot of content, but it didn't have the big budget of a $25 million, you know, yeah, episode I mean, guy show. Early on, I was like totally into the development. Like, let's take time to build this stuff. But by like the later episodes, holy shit, it didn't go anywhere. Like, it just, yeah, I was like, this is a lot. And, <laughs> and then, well, and then once, and then once they brought them all together for Defenders, and that was just fucking terrible. I uh, mean, it just, it just it Iron just, Fist left a bad yeah. taste in everyone's mouth. Yeah. Don't forget about that. Uh, it just sort Iron of Fist was terrible. Yeah, and it left Auto a bad taste in everybody's mouth about like anything <laughs> that wasn't Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> And they were and they were, was so good. They were trying to tell me like just stick it out. You it, it gets no, it doesn't get better. I stuck it out. I I I, I watched it all and it got tiresome. But Daredevil was like here, and everything else was kind of like here, 
right? I mean, it was a yeah. big fucking yeah, dude. D'Onofrio, uh, his portrayal of Kingpin was arguably the best villain in Marvel live action, better than Thanos, better than freaking anything. I mean, it was awesome. I would so argue good. that Daredevil was the best translation of a comic to screen of anything. Yeah, I mean, it was chilling. It was just it chilling. Was so I love Bullseye. Good. Bullseye was exceptional. Um, I and I joked a little bit earlier. What did you guys think about the uh, push notification from uh, the key collector app that that knocked uh, Gary Nusser's Daredevil twenty five spec to uh, like the hottest book of the week, hotter than uh, King in Black? Uh, I mean, is, is this a demonstration that the key collector app moves the market more than a goddamn Netflix series? I mean, literally. Literally, Daredevil had a live action television show and no one cares about Daredevil book. <laughs> then all of a all sudden, right, I won't, let's talk Netflix about that because I love that book. And it goes boom. I know that you love uh, Daredevil comics. No, I but like the run too. Here's what I love. Too, what I love. Everybody knows that I love late printings, right? But what I love, what I fucking love about this book is that it actually validates first printings again. Right, literally, like the second printing of this book is gonna two x the first printing. That that one in twenty five first print, that's a special book. All of a sudden, I think that's fucking brilliant. I I, I couldn't be happier about that. Right, uh, from a guy who loves late printings, but this keeps collectors on their toes, and I think um, it keeps people honest. So we're gonna see fifty six thousand easy. Easy for that second print. Easy, right? That one in 25 first print. My LCS, right? They ordered like 15 copies of that first print. They're targeting 50 for the second. Now, that's not indicative of the entire market, but I'll say this. I mean, you know, that, that, that that's telling, right? That, that That's telling that everybody's rushing in to grab the second print for that first print. It's going to be a key, I think, for a long time. Is it going to hold these values? No, I wouldn't think so. Um, but it's going to be around for a while. I, I think it's going to be a good book to have for a long time. Um, not at, you know, 50 bucks for whatever the first, uh, for the cover A and not 150 for, you know, that one in 25, but, you know, 15 bucks and 75 bucks for the one in 25. I think, I think those are some pretty good books. And I love it when the market is shaken up like this. I fucking love it. Love it. Keeps guys on their toes. I think that one in 25 is going to be the high water mark, but yeah, it's I, not going to hit well, well, 150 or whatever it's going for. If it holds that, I would be blown away. Do not expect that at all. Jessup. I'm with you. Um, but man, I, I would stay away from all of the second prints. Like we've reached that time where, you know, the, the shops know, so they're, they're going to try to, in my opinion, you know, they're going to try to pump a second print for this thing that, that may or may not tank in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And yeah, I don't know if it tanks. I mean, you know, Daredevil, I'm, I'm a Daredevil collector. Like, literally, since I've been 16, Daredevil's been my favorite book. I have three blonde boxes of Daredevil, dude. I, I am too, but. It, it's I, I'm not, I'm like, not, I want to be clear. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not pumping the prices because that's not what I'm into. Oh no, for. I know you're not. I know you're not. I'm just saying. I. I, I think shops are with that. Uh, not to call it any shops. I don't even know what shop is doing it. But, um, it the second print. Yeah, I, I know we all love late printings. I love them. I, I know you love them. Um, but. Not the, the one to buy. <laughs> I, I think they're going to kill this late, dude, printing. late printing, dude. This second print is going to be two x the first. I am certain of it. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I think that I think I think if if I think I'm understanding you correctly, the first printing is the one to buy, just like the way it was all of our lives <laughs> until the last year and a half, two years, uh, where you know the the ones in 05 through that time where no one gave a shit about them. Oops. Uh, you know, 
and now it's like, oh, maybe it's, you know, coming full circle where you get the first prints when they come out as opposed to sitting around and waiting for the that third print Venom or the uh, – what was the – I, I didn't buy it. I missed out on all of them. And I should have ordered a bunch of that, that Starling on the Miss Marvel, that connecting cover, because mm -hmm. I thought it was great. I wanted, and I could have bought 20 of all of them. And now I'm glad I didn't. But perhaps that would have been, you know, a short box just sitting in the, in the basement for a while. I don't know. I just, yeah. I think you're right. I think there's going to be 60,000 of the second print versus 30,000 of the first. The first is going to be the book you want to own, which is awesome, which keeps the the entire hobby on its toes. I love it, right? It was so clear to buy seconds for a long time when nobody gave a shit about them. Now people give a shit about them. You want to focus on the first. Brilliant. I love it. I love it. Like, this is what the hobby should be about, right? It shouldn't be formulaic. You know what was interesting uh, following Daredevil 25 was um, we saw copies of the first Frank Miller Daredevil moving on eBay. Uh, Phil can attest it was nearly on the CBSI Hot 10. Almost I on the dropped, Hot 10, yeah. Yeah, I dropped uh, a little uh, tidbit about it in the weekend update. Um, I love that, frankly, uh, right? Like a uh, creator first on a title... Um, getting attention again, um, you know, and, and please don't take my observation about Nick's push notification having more of an impact on the market than Marvel television <laughs> as a criticism of the key collector app. Uh, I like Nick. I, I like the app and uh, I'm not making like a value judgment there, but Note that nobody on the panel disagreed with me about that one. <laughs> I mean, no. well, it's, it's, it's great if, you know, um, and I really like even, to see even it, as it move seller, the book. Even oh as a God. seller, I was able to get that my Na Naomi one. I, I forgot I even had it, my CGC 9.8 Naomi one, and get that thing listed, you know, within minutes and catch it before all, all, everyone listed their other 900 copies and still, you know, get double what it was selling for, you know. And, and I was able to catch the proverbial falling knife. Dude, and I, I know, always I know, I know, Mr. Long, I know Ben's getting a first Frank Miller on Daredevil. I have no uh, doubt. Yeah. Uh, so I, I always no joke, tonight. I always joke that uh, if I was a retailer, yeah. I would pay for my subs to get a, a key collector subscription so that they could just go and look through the app. Right. Like robots. I guess nobody watches the social dilemma. And buy all of the books in my back issue bin. Jesus, hire my son to just sit and just go through your dude. I was at an LCS. I stopped by because I pressed a couple books for a buddy, and I, his car was. He, he says, "Yeah, I'll be there." All right, cool. So I'm swinging by, and one of the shop owners, uh, partner, or whatever, is outside smoking a cigarette. When I'm walking in with a couple books. I'm like, "Hey, I'm bringing these in for Evan." Blah blah blah. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, he, he and Dave are in there going through uh, digging for gold. Uh, they, they've got probably 200 long boxes across their table. That's their back issue bin. But they also mm -hmm. have another 200 underneath, but it's curtained wow. off. And my buddies are going through those. But they'll price them. He'll price them. They used to use Overstreet, but they don't anymore. So I don't really right. shop there. Yeah, so I'm kind of like, yeah, cool. You know, every once in a while you can get something by them or they, they grade it. Depends on how they grade things or whatever. But anyways, these guys are going through that stuff. Cool, cool. Walk in, say hello to everybody. And what was I talking about? The key collector app and uh, people using it to pick keys. I, like if I had a retail shop, I would give all of my customers that app to yeah. pick books and go buy them. I'd be like, look, here's here's your subscription. These are all the keys you want. Go buy them off of me. I have uh, sorry, all I, I got sidetracked into two stories there. Yeah, that's what I would say. I, instead of letting my buddies go through and pick them out and set them on a table for you and you can grant them whatever, just just hire a kid and give them the app. <laughs> and did, did you ever hear the real the social dilemma? The real social dilemma, give it to a child. <laughs> right. Well, no, yeah, sure. I mean, dude, they're going to go through it quicker than you are. 
I mean, odds are, but it, 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 or maybe not. Like, dude, I've got kids all that age. They, they, it'd probably be a you're just wasting your your hourly wage there. But uh, let's see. Does he have it? Does he have it? There, uh, there was ben, so the, the, mo the moment of truth, kid. Ben. It's the moment of Steve. truth. Yep, I called it. Oh, but it's the uh, uh, not Whitman. Uh, the uh, uh, oh, she's got the price variant. Is that a price variant? So I've had this since I was a kid. Like I started reading Daredevil when I was 16. So, like this, when I grabbed this when I was a kid, like this was it for me. Like this fucking book was it. Yeah. So, I just got it yeah. rated literally like two months ago. Like nine four. I've had this thing in my collection since since I was a fucking kid, man. That's awesome. I mean, I love that you have the price variant. I didn't even know I had it. Be Is honest. it price variant? Because sometimes the that that sunburst. Um, Is that not a price variant? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Is it a forty cent price variant? I didn't even know there be. was a price variant on that book. We'll find out here in two points. Yeah, I can't seconds. remember. While you're looking that up, Nico, um, as a service to the the viewers, um, if they have a public library um, and a lot of public libraries use Hoopla. Uh, your and Ben's favorite fraction, Hawkeye Run, is on there. Nice. So you, there's no excuse for anyone not to read it. And I already I checked it out on my other screen. Not a um, price variant, Steve. What's that? It's not a price variant. It's just yeah, the sunburn. Yeah, I said yeah, exactly. Um, so all of them are forty cents. All of them are forty cents. Yeah. But anyway, I love that freaking book. I like uh, books like um, that. For a thousand different reasons. What's this thing called, Steve? I wish I could pull it up. Uh, Hoopla. It H O O P L A. Right, and most public libraries, um, you know, give you access to it. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you, even if you want to, instead of you know ruining your precious you know nine eight potential copies, if you just want to go reread it on your iPad or Kindle, you can just uh, check it out there. I get 12 checkouts a month and nice. uh, yeah. Very nice. I'm going to read uh, it for free. Yeah. So uh, I wish Dino was here so I could do this uh, properly. I, I think I lack the, uh, well, that didn't work. Um, make it over my head instead of yours. Um, <laughs> can somebody tell me what the hell uh, is going on here? You, you guys were kind enough to share it with me on a chat. It appears that uh, Nightwing Steve, come on, step up, man. This is come all on. you. Yeah, I know this came out what, what, yesterday, and you know it looks like amalgamation of um, Terminator and Nightwing. Plus, if you notice, he's holstering a, a gun there, and has the uh, T belt, which is either I don't know Terminator or Teen Titans. Um, so I guess people, are, yeah. So this is his partner, Red X. So you know the what the multiple uh, questions there, you know. Is that Dick Grayson, Nightwing, and why the hell is he wearing a mashup of the two characters? Um, you know, is it an existing character? Is it a new character? Who the hell is Red X? Uh, you know, I'm still going with it's a robot, but you know, um, yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot to ask ask there and question about. Um, one thing I have been catching up on my DC reading lately, okay. um, and you know. Um, I hadn't read Nightwing for a while, but I guess back in issue 52, they introduced a character called Hutch who took up um, the uh, Nightwing mantle and there was a group of people around him. Um, and I, I read issue 75 where uh, Dick Grayson takes the Nightwing ba mantle back from Hutch. Um, so I'm kind of wondering whether they incorporate Hutch who is an African-American Nightwing um, into the future, so there, there's a possibility uh, for you. I, I'm really looking forward to, um, uh, and I've got my fingers crossed that it's it's good because you, they announced on uh, today, which we're recording this Saturday, um, that in March they're going to have a Teen Titans Academy series that follows Future State. Actually, is that that cover was from? <laughs> From T Titans Academy, right? 
Issue number two. So I believe that I believe that's issue number two. Oh, right? okay. So that's okay. Gotcha. So, um, so sorry, got some notifications there. Um, so, uh, Teen Titans Academy. Uh, what we're going to see in future state is the some of the mentors and proteges. Um, you know, it's going to be like strange academy or one of those types of schools right where the traditional teen titans are going to come back in future state and teach the um the young heroes um i guess how to be heroes right but we're going to see the aftermath of that in future state but then in march we're going to have a teen titans academy number one which will show the beginnings of that academy um so that, there, that'll be some interesting spec possibility as, as to, you know, who's going to be the, uh, who are going to be the younger characters, right, in the Teen Titans Academy. Steve, I, when you talk about that kind of stuff, I realize just how uh, much I have to learn. It's much like when Phil talks about Star Wars. Um, <laughs> it makes me feel really dumb. So uh, I guess uh, in an effort to uh, feel uh, even more dumb, uh, my question is, did anybody go uh, pick books and uh, bring books to uh, uh, show off for uh, the people uh, who were kind enough to be here at home? I see Carter reaching. Is that a yay? Yeah. God. Carter never not um, get books. Let's be honest. Okay, I'll tell you what. Um, these now are the moment everyone's been waiting for. Okay, now I did again. <laughs> I've sh I showed this book um, in uh, one of my videos. Nice. Listen, Carter, if you're going to show previews books, you're going to take care of the hobby because I fucking got literally skewered. <laughs> so put them away. <laughs> you're getting flat. You got to wear, wear a bulletproof vest. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, listen, man. Come on, we'll, we'll all do it. I've, I've got the first king in black here. <laughs> Okay, so we have Marvel previews number 59, and we have the first uh, preview appearance of uh, Lady Bullseye. I didn't even know this thing existed until I saw it. Um, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Yeah, this thing is freaking gorgeous, and I, and I think there is one up on eBay right now for like maybe 14 bucks. But, uh, I mean, just this, 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 this cover, I think this background is different from uh, Daredevil 111, is it? I think they used it for a variant or a second printing. Okay. But yeah, that was the not the cover world. for the Daredevil. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. But yeah, this is. Hey, Carter, is that book in one of those new uh, My Lights? Um, kind of, it's sort of kind of. I, I got this from a store because it yeah. fit because this book well, was so. But let fit. me ask you this: Have you noticed that stores have been using uh, my lights now instead of uh, traditional bags? Did somebody run a sale on those or something? <laughs> I don't. You the know hell's what? been going on? I think a special book had come in this, and I just kind of recycled it for okay. this. So that's about it. But yeah, this book doesn't go for anything, and I love it's this. It's beautiful, book. dude. They, beautiful. they did use it for the variant. What was that? They did use it for the variant, for the okay. one on variant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But what about this like target background? Yeah. Do you that's it. okay, that image was in there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right, cool. And we have another preview. We have a DC previews number seventeen. Um, this book was uh, this was a bit of a challenge to find. Uh, because every store that I asked about previews, they were like, oh, we got rid of those or, you know, did we, you know, we recycled them. So uh, I happened to come across a, uh, a previews, you know, that big, thick previews, and this was in there. Yeah, you know, Carter, I get a few of my talking about this shit. So I just want you to be careful. It's literally I, I can take it. I kicked I out of the goddamn hobby. <laughs> I, I, I'm listen, I'm down to kill the hobby. <laughs> bring it. Bring it. Bring it. You, know what, you, you know what the funniest part is? That's how Ben and I met was uh, over that book, remember? Yeah, no shit, man. No kidding. 
Tom interviewed the guy that bought it, and I was like, well, "Fuck this! I got to get the guy who sold it." And, yeah. <laughs> and so I got Ben, and that's how we met. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and then uh, Outlawed spawned from there. People hated, uh, maybe us, yeah, really, maybe just you. Hard college. to tell. Uh, yeah. So long live the previous. Right Good on. Shit with the first sector. Carter's also pulled every uh, Far Sector one second print in a 400 mile radius, so there's yes. none for me. Yes, which I is really painful. Yes, yes, he got them all. I yes. want to be Carter. If I could be somebody, I'd be Carter. Absolutely sure. not. Absolutely <laughs> not. I, I, I would even want to be me. <laughs> um, again, again, I found this. So we have Star Wars Old Republic number four. Glad Phil Blood. explained to us what the hell that book is. Blood of the Empire. Even though I bought him, I, I didn't know what it was until today. Yes. Um, Thank God for Phil. Yeah, Phil explained <laughs> this uh, earlier. It's uh, how many first appearance, like major first appearances? I think there's a few, but I mean, I think it's definitely worthwhile to YouTube vitiate, and you'll okay. see how badass that guy is. Like, okay. that's a pretty badass Sith Lord. Like, it's like that's like maybe top three. Ooh. Like nice. maybe for nice. Sith Lords, Look at this you know. Smile so on Carter. <laughs> you you did good, and now it's Thank popping you. right now with this whole yeah. Star Wars keys wave right now. So yeah, dude, it's like fine. It, it's it's great because I'm just, I was just checking eBay just a few minutes ago, and I'm just saying <laughs> Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. I was like, geez, because I noticed we're coming up on the uh, year anniversary of um, Clone Wars number one becoming hot. If it, because I remember wow. searching for that. I remember searching for Clone Wars like around late December. You know what I mean? Yeah, December, and, uh, February. Yeah, around there. yeah. And, yeah. Then that, and then that year's time, just everything else. It's just been like this avalanche tidal wave, tsunami, whatever you want to call it, of um, Star Wars books just getting hot. It's nuts. I love it. Love it. Did you, love it. Did you start in Columbus, Carter? No, 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 no. <laughs> No, I didn't fight any. I just watch your videos. <laughs> you fight them every week. I'm I'm all over though. I'm all over though. But uh, Star Wars Tales number four found another copy of that. I was surprised this was in the uh, long box. Is that a newsstand? No, 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 no. It's not. I wish it were. They hey, all there's of... a there's something interesting about that book. Okay. Okay. So um, I don't know it's, if it's every copy or not, but um. At least in mine, if you if you look in on the interior page, okay, you got a double. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna we're gonna swap you guys out. Copy handy. Oh, we got an error. We got an error. Uh, you got two pages uh, on the cover uh, and the first page. Uh, double first page error. Uh, so the moment of truth, Carter. The moment of truth. Crack it open. Let's see it. Yeah. You got oh. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Boom. laughs> okay. And um, let's see. I found a couple copies of Daredevil 25. First you, print. You paid $50 and... a piece for him? Oh, uh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> bad joke, bad joke. El bad Cheapo, joke. El Cheapo <laughs> would not let me do that. So Chin uh, Chintzy, as our grandparents used Chintzy. to call us. Chintzy. So we got these. And uh, let's see, some more Star Wars or... Uh, bu -bu 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 oh, this. I noticed these. So we have General Grievous, number three and number four. You notice we have uh, some nice newsstand copies. Very nice. Okay, and for some reason, these are going for a little bit of scratch. For whatever reason. Not quite sure why. But this is popular, man. Yeah. yeah. I, my, uh, my, one of my Star Wars people who's not a, a YouTuber, uh, TJ Timebaum, who's just uh -huh. super, super smart about comics uh, and got a great Instagram buy page. If you get a chance, like he's <laughs> always just throwing books away. For, I'm like, you sold that for what? Um, but anyway, he uh, <coughs> was like, oh, just pick up all the Grievous. You can sell the lots. He told me that forever ago, like a dum-dum. I didn't remember that until just now. So, 
I'm just yeah. buying any Star Wars book I see that. And that's it. Yeah. That's all I got. BF or higher. Yeah. Did anybody else go digging? I took uh, the weekend off. I got some slabs back. Sweet. But before we go to the slabs, um, I, this this came in the mail. I, I just opened it up before the show started, and oh, um, well, that? this is Terry Moore's latest uh, latest work. Oh, so wow. it's a, a graphic novel uh, ever. So for those of you not familiar, uh, Terry Moore is one of the most talented artists and, and writers in indie space. Uh, you know, most famous for Strangers in Paradise, which is a series that um, I'm not actually into. I, I started reading Terry with Rachel Rising. And um, and so this is a special edition hardcover that you can only order through his, um, his publishing label, Abstract Studios. And it, it came with a, a print as oh, well. Wow. Um, the guy's just super, super talented. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. Gorgeous. And, yeah, and he's um, coming out with a... Um, if, if for those that read Rachel Rising, there was this character in there called Zoe, and she was the—I couldn't compare her to like um, Hit Girl, a really young, young Hit Girl with a really foul mouth, and she's uh, she's a killer. And he's coming out with a solo series uh, for her called Serial. Nice. Um, so look out for that. Oh, there's one more thing I got through the mail. There we go. <laughs> I, hardly ever, I hardly ever pay market price. I, I paid market price for this, um, you know, because I, I, I think it's good spec. Plus, uh, you know, I'm a DC. Homer, I did the same. So, you know. So, I but did I the same thing. The market on that, like 40, 50 bucks? Is that what Yeah, like, fi like 50 bucks. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's kind of like for the personal collection. So um, Now, what about, figured, that, what about it, that book do you see? Um, uh, like as far as uh future, you ready? Yeah, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Ben's Marvel previews ninety five selling for seventy five hundred dollars. That's Bingo. what I see about it. I'm just Ricky, like, yeah, Ricky, yeah, yeah it's, it's, DC. It, it's it's um right. Yara floor. I Eight mean, if you see the cover alone, you've got uh. The, the Brazilian Wonder Woman, you've got Red X right here. You've got the non-binary Flash, which they ch talked about some more uh, in Brazil today. I forget what they said. She's or, uh, from Earth-11. Um, trying to think what else. They, they gave some further background on that character. I think that's a good play, man. I don't have it. I've got the whatever, the, the, the regular version, the blue version, but... Which and those having the same covers, I think, will hurt that uh, a little bit. But at the yeah. end of the day, if one of those characters takes off, I think that book takes off. Yeah, I didn't. You know, it's it's not. It's like not really an investment. I with if I had multiple copies, yeah. But I, I don't. I don't see that's for the personal collection. Anyway, back from CGC. You got to take them out of the plot. There we go. Now you got it right. Now you well, got you it know right. What I discovered taking them out. Yeah, no, I think yeah. plastic's so cheap. If oh, so, wow. this is um, I have a nine eight of as well, um, or do I? I can't remember with this one. Um, this is the first cameo with um, what Cindy Moon, right? So, and this was only a, a diamond retailer. That's beautiful, man. Good book. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I do. I do have the nine eight as well, but you don't, you don't need to see that. Um, so I bought a lot, uh, if you remember a story from a couple, maybe about a month or two ago, um, I picked up a bunch of Diamond retailer variants because I'm in Baltimore and, and so, is, is, so is Diamond. So an ex-employee was selling off a bunch of copies. So, um, so this is the inked um, Jim Lee cover, the Batman wedding, Batman 50, uh, 9.6. It's beautiful, dude. And those two were the only 9.6s. The other 23 I got. Well, I shouldn't spoil it, should I? But I thought that was Daredevil and Catwoman for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got some really esoteric. Beautiful cover, though. Uh, books. 
This is a uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, it's a it's uh, I think it's a nine cover connecting set. Jesus. Um, this is the only one in the census. I think it was a one in thirty. Nice. I you know I think Power Rangers when you talk about franchises, uh, Power Ranger fans. I think that that's one we could see a lot of. Um, Somebody sell me uh, the underwear comic. Yeah. Right. So, uh, um, this is um, a Dave McKeon um, Beneath the Dark Crystal variant. You know, he's the Sandman cover artist. I think this was a one in 50. I think this might be the only one in the census. That's too. badass, dude. Um, and, and so these are kind of flyers where the price hasn't been established, but there was a, no, a low enough buy-in where, um, where I could afford to take the risk. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Skip that one. I love that Steve teaches me stuff. It makes me happy. <laughs> ah, Another second. Power Rangers variant. It may look familiar. What right. is that? Power Rangers no, 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 number... Never mind. What is that? Power Rangers number... Power Rangers 25. So this was another ratio variant. I love Nirvana homage. Yeah, I figure someone's gotta gotta want that. I, I want it. Ben loves. Uh, ben, is it you who likes the Nirvana cover swipes? No, I mean I like some of them, but I, I'm not the guy. If you're thinking of, I mean, okay. so that's so you. Yep. That's a good one, man. I love yeah. it. You know the books nobody fucking talks about are all of the uh, the prelude books for the MCU movies. Like I think there's some, there's a play there, longer yeah. term, right? There's there was a you know for every single movie there was a prelude that came out that nobody bought. I don't read Valiant, but I know Valiant fans are manic, and this is a rare Clayton Crane. And I love I love Clayton Crane. Unfortunately, he's not usually drawing books that I read, but um, but this is a diamond retailer variant. So That's very awesome, man. Great yeah. book. That's beautiful. So I yeah, all the, every crane cover I see if I, f I see it for a buck. Yeah, I I, I, Crane is so immensely talented all, all of these are already up on ebay and for sale um so, i got my phone ready yeah so yeah so, so no <laughs> no lack of uh hey see by the way that book yeah. guy here is safe thank you so much nice dude <laughs> uh this was a one in 100 uh wwe variant um randy macho man savage where so, is the big light that's right? awesome yeah. Yeah. I, who drew this? This was, uh, I don't know. It says Oliver Barrett, but I don't, I, I haven't heard of him, but I mean, he did a pretty good, good job. I mean, there, there's like a reflection in the sunglasses. Um, it's, it's, it's my pretty, pen name. I did. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. I, I, th I think that's a pretty cool cover. So yeah, a lot of these are, this was a very, I'll say the word again, esoteric batch. But like I said, it was worth taking taking flyers. There's a Finch. Oh, uh, that's sick, dude. No, that's that's a re retailer variant. Never see that. Yeah, and I, I got two, two of them. Nice. That's beautiful, man. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I I, you're selling that right now. Yeah. This is um, might be your buyer on that one. This, this, <laughs> I got Carter's up there thinking the same thing. Sure. This has got to heat up in the future. So I think this was a thank you variant for the second printing of uh, Power Rangers. Oh, wow. Turtles number one. I mean, when you bring two franchises like that together um, with rabid fans, um, you know, one per store, I, I got to think that this. Smart, you know, man. Really yeah, smart, Steve. Good stuff. You know, the first time that they appear together. Um. Yeah, let's see. And just got a, a couple more. 
Uh, Into the mind of Steve. I love it. Black badge number one. Um, this this is a a little option. This, this is a big flyer. So this is really um, hoping that this you know gets optioned right. It did. Huh? That got optioned. Yeah, it did get optioned. Right. You said it gets made. That it actually gets made right. And plus, hey, I love Lemire. He's one of my favorite Amen. artists. Amen. And, um, so I don't I don't mind it sitting in. City. Did uh, did he draw that cover too? What's that? Did Lemire draw that cover or just write he the only series? Drew it. He only oh, drew, he only drew Matt, the cover. It's a Matt Kent. Uh, That's Matt book. Kent. I apologize. Right. Thank you. No problem. And let's see if there's another one here. Oh, here's another one. We'll make this the the last one. WWE 16, Alexa Bliss. Um, I forget what ratio this is. I think maybe one to twenty or one to thirty. Um, and uh, I've had a couple raw copies of this, and they sell pretty well. I gotta think. You know, anytime you take wrestling and comics and put them together, good stuff, man. Get a nice looking, you know, lady there. So, hey, have you seen the uh, Eric Powell Stone Cold Steve Austin variant? I I've seen it, but only on a on a, a computer monitor. <laughs> I, yeah, I've been I've been on the uh, hunt for that one. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, neither yeah. did I. Very but much. But if so. I find it, I won't yeah. snag it from you. I'll just grab it and go to you for whatever it costs. Yeah. Appreciate it. <clears throat> well, guys, we uh, are almost at the two hour mark. Uh, anybody got any closing thoughts? I got one more book. Nice. I got one more. No, here's a oh, book. Oh, 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 Actually, wait, oh, oh, is it a book? Oh, is it a book? Okay, it's more of a preview. More of a preview. So we had Marvel yeah, Required. In trouble, Carter. The preview <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> I told you I'm trying to bring this hobby <laughs> down. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So Marvel Requirer number eleven. I've been after this book. I've been after this for probably four or five years. Okay. <laughs> And it's it's eluded me. But when Dark Hawk started getting you know a little hot, I'm like, okay, we now we gotta now we gotta search. So we have the f first first uh, appearance. This even predates uh, Marvel, Marvel Age. Marvel Age number ninety seven by I think about a month. So there he is, smack dab on the cover. This is along the lines of the uh, comic shop news, a little free pamphlet that um that comes with your you know like the old school stores you know will give you and uh i love this book uh, i think i paid like ugh, i'm thinking i paid 15 dollars for it you know and it it could go to 40 it could you know it, the Carter, price is the only one that has one of the roller coaster and on top of that this is a, it's a little it's a little yellow and it's a little bent at the top so if you can find one so yeah, we're just using a little bleach with water, right? I know, right? Yeah, that'll clear right up. So bad joke, bad joke. It's a little, little bit, but yeah, this is. Uh, I love this book so much. Ma. So there we go. Marvel Choir. So let me ask you this: Is this worth anything? Is this the first fucking Strange Academy? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know. Is it? Uh, it's worth holding on to. It's definitely worth I don't know, is this or hold on hold on or is this or is this is this the first strange academy don't stop hold on hold on let's wait a second don't stop believing inside the first pages here we go hold on hold on to that feeling i can't keep shit straight but like what is the first strange academy is it this is it this cuz this has this like there's a lot of strange account, strange shit going on. I don't know. I think previews yeah, come from before comic shop news, so I think the previews. You think the send previews? it straight to Sarasota. Right. It's all I'm good. just Dang. excited that you guys go to comic hey, shop to get I'm telling comic me, shop news. If you hit it in a previous <laughs> book that goes big, they'll kick you out of the goddamn hobby. <laughs> I can tell you equivocally, you will be labeled a fraud. 
<laughs> like this, this this week, right? So I don't know if the healer becomes a big deal, but this this book seems pretty like a pretty good play. My guess is they don't, but for the buy-in here, it seems like a pretty smart smart book. Absolutely, I think, I think that's a smart buy, Ben. Yeah, I agree too. But I'm a guy who collects mask covers, so. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, thank you. We're going to try to do this uh, more regularly. Ah, oh, my buddy. <laughs> All right. So Topher pointed this out on Instagram, right? So yeah. this book, right? So we saw the last episode of Mandalorian. Um, you see Goth Midian go up to Grogu and be like, with the dark sabers, like, you ever seen one of these in your some time ago in your ages, right? So there's actually a, a Yoda in this in this book. And it's a it's a little infant. It's a little kid. And it's kind of hard to make out without me destroying the binding here, but let me see. Sweet right there. Jesus, man. There's a little oh, Jesus sweet it's Jesus. in the corner. Little man. little baby Yoda here throwing oh, a tantrum dear. with a little satchel. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it might have just been like a fun little joke if he, if Filoni knows about this book. But who knows? I mean, it could be the first Grogu. Who knows? It's possible. Well, is there he any doesn't say anything? The, is there any truth to the rumor that episode 15 is titled The Shipyards? No. I haven't. Wow, well, I haven't. No, I'm just uh, making that up. But that would, seen be, it. that would be kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a name for it? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, um, yeah. Just, guys, just going thanks. back. Sorry, really quick, but just going back with this book. I think he's a probably pretty going to be a pretty good mentor for uh, Baby Yoda, Quinlan Voss. Well, he's not on the cover, but you know, because like Quinlan Voss, he goes dark side under Count Dooku for a certain amount of time, and um, before Disney bought. Uh, Star Wars, right? Uh, he was killed off during Order sixty six. Well, Dave Filoni and the and the other heads decided to to not unkill him. He he, so he's still alive. So um, it's possible and you get two for one here with uh, uh, Quinlan Vos, Asajj Ventress. There were a couple. They were a couple. So um, this book for sure. I mean, you can get it for like fifteen to thirty five bucks. I'd yeah, grab so it. So that's There's a newsstand too. And can we talk about that, Phil? Because a lot of people love Asajj. They're all buying uh, that first appearance, paying huge money for it. And I get that um, it is, uh, you know, apparently uh, a little harder to come by than uh, that Dark Horse run of Star Wars. But if you get Asajj, you got to get Voss, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, they have to come as a tandem. It has, they have to. That's you think, I think you know? Yeah. Uh, so we could go on for hours. I'm gonna uh, right. cut this off at, at two. I want to thank you guys all for being here. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we'll be back next week with more stuff. Hey, can I? Can I? Thank you, George. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So my dad came down um, last week to bring down some things, and uh, I think. Well, I mean, George, you and I, we're about the same age. Yeah. So, Tragically old. Th th this <laughs> came. Oh, oh get that out of here, dude. I mean, I love it. Good stuff, buddy. This, I mean, it's got a tape pull right here. Who cares? Uh, it was all rolled up and the, the tape was still on the back. Uh, but, dude, I remember. Poor, poor I, priceless. I love this poster. And yeah. uh, legitimately priceless. Yeah. And uh, man, I went down to grab a drink and I, I have one of these too. Who, I guess it's this way. Oh, yeah. There you go. That book is brilliant, man. Uh, well, somebody said something about a variant. I don't think it's a variant. I think no. they were 40 cents that time. No, I think they were, in fact. Yeah, that was my, that was my failing. Please forgive me. And, no, that's all right. And, and the run back to it. Uh, I've got like a European pence ver like an English pence version of that book. I, I don't know why they had the uh, like the explosion forty cent on that one, but not on this one. But it, it, the following issue, I think it was like he did the interior art too, correct? Correct. Yeah. Uh, 
Steve, these are for you, buddy. Um, and love these it. Are, oh, wow, dude. Love it. Are, DCU. Man. Well, I never, I never unbagged them from. If, if I get a book from High Half Price Books and it's got a nice bag and board on it, I'll just leave it in there because it gets costly. Uh, I'll just read. That's, that's, that's fantastic pickup. It's a dollar fifty. Unbelievable. Yep. That's why they call you HPC. <laughs> Wait for it, buddy. Oh, oh no shit. wow. Oh, shit. Wow. This, this, this came in. Uh, I have a rule for anybody that like, like digs and things like that. If you see a DCU variant. Holy shit. Keep yeah. going. In a box, they usually come in either like four or twelve, right? Three, four, or twelve, or something like that. Or yeah, the twos, four. Yeah, they're kind of like Sith, right? Like they don't come alone, right? Right. I mean, if you see one, definitely, it's worth going. Th- I mean, as long as you have the time, keep yeah. going through them because, yeah, they they, they come in pairs. Or they came in a box. Like sometimes I I found one of half price books that was like in a like in a cardboard box, kind of like yeah. a like a. I don't know, like a little, like somebody did some fancy box for it, and they were all DCUs inside. So, wow! Um, if you're That's a collector, awesome. though, some people are, some people are, but congratulations! That was Good great. Job. And awesome. uh, somebody mm-hmm. said, "Did before I, I came out, I went out and smoked a cigarette when I got back from dinner before I came in here, and somebody's talking some shit about uh, STC." The SDCT variant. So, uh, it was a Facebook complaint. So don't take it, take it for what it's worth. But somebody was complaining on one of the Facebook groups, which go ahead and pick one. There's tons of them. Right. Um, that their $20 sale on that book got canceled and they jacked the price up to like one fifty, and then they bought it at one fifty. And they canceled it and jacked it to two fifty. No way. Is that even a thing? Can you even do that on Facebook? Or on, I'm sorry, on eBay? Can you? Can you? Yeah, you incur a lot of fees. You could end up getting your uh, your account. Uh, like, Who's just, buying like, that book at one fifty? I don't know. Somebody, somebody's out of their goddamn mind. So can yeah, we really. talk about the? Uh, just I, and I hate to kind of belabor. I, I was trying to keep this to. Sorry, hours, yeah, but, I, I didn't mean no, to drag but it's, you know, in, I, but it's important. Um, edit it out if you don't want to. I mean, I, no, no, this is important. Uh, we're definitely not going to edit anything. We're not that high tech. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> shit. Uh, the reports were when that um, you're talking about the NYCC uh, Naomi book, right? Um, they, yeah, that's, that's what he's talking about. Okay. okay. And uh, so they, they were initially at NYCC, and then they had them uh, the following week at SDCC, right. and uh, or vice versa. I can't remember which, uh, but my understanding okay. from people who were like there on the ground was that whichever you know they they switch. Uh, I'm not correct. Way, it was San Diego, then and and, and then so, New York. So yeah. they were, people were grabbing them at New York, like they by were, the stacks. Like right, right now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they just had tons and tons and tons of them, um, and I think that um, your better buy is the first print. Just uh, for the record, if you like that book, and uh, yeah, so alas, uh, thank you, gentlemen. I am incredibly grateful. Thank you, Jordan. 